Hello students, how are you all? I hope you are doing well and you are staying safe at your home. I am Vikas Monakar, PGT Physics from Kendri Vidhalya Lensdown. So today we are going to study chapter number 9 of class 12 physics, ray optics and optical instruments. This is lecture number 1. So initially we discussed the syllabus for 2020 and 21 for this unit ray optics. This chapter 9 ray optics and optical instrument consists of these topics reflection of light, spherical mirror, mirror formula, refraction of light, total internal reflection and its applications, optical fiber, refraction at the spherical surfaces, lenses, thin lens formula, lens makers formula, magnification, power of lens, combination of thin lenses in contact, refraction of light through a prism, scattering of light, blue color of sky and reddish appearance of the sun at the time of sunrise and sunset. In the second part, we will study about optical instruments. These are microscope, reflecting type telescope, refracting type telescope. Okay, and we will study about their magnifying power. So few things you have already studied in 10th standard, but you have studied in the basic form. Here you will study in advanced form. So these all content you will study through different lectures. So few of the contents I will take in this lecture that is lecture number one. So in the lecture number one I will take the following content, following topics. First one, the introduction to ray optics. We will discuss about real and virtual image, relation between the focal length and radius of curvature in case of a mirror and the mirror formula. So the mirror formula you have used in 10th standard. So in this lecture, we will derive this formula. Okay, with the help of chalk and board. So you have studied about the audible range of sound. The human ear is capable of hearing from 20 to 20,000 hertz. That is known as audible range. Very similarly, human eye is capable of seeing or watching up to a particular frequency. Okay, so there is a frequency range. Okay, that range is called visible range and only the visible radiations the human eye can watch. So when the size of the object is very very larger or very very greater than the wavelength of the light then it seems that light is traveling in a straight line and light traveling in a straight line you call it a ray and the ray is traveling in a straight line the several rays which are coming from a light source they are considered as the beam of light so you study the properties of light by considering as a ray under the branch of optics that is called ray optics so in this we consider light as the rays or as the beam and we study several properties of light which is electromagnetic radiation okay you have studied about the reflection of light okay the bouncing back of light after striking through any polished surface so directly i'll jump or quickly i'll jump over convex and concave surface so there you can see the picture the side that is bulging out that is known as convex surface and slightly depressed that is known as 
concave surface spoon you have seen there you can see both type of surfaces concave surface as well as convex surface they show different type of properties as you have studied in then standard now through a plane mirror quickly i'll tell you real image and a virtual image through the sheet in fact i'll tell you about the real image and the virtual image so real image is that image which is forming at a particular point okay screen can be placed here however in case of a virtual image a screen can not be placed any person who is watching from this side he will feel he or she will feel that the light rays are coming from this particular point so real image simply we can say those images which can be projected at the screen are called real image and those images which cannot be projected on the screen are called virtual image now you have used the formula in 10th standard relation between focal length and radius of curvature now in class 12th it's a time to derive the relation so in deriving we take a concave mirror okay the concave mirror we draw the principal axis the part which divides the mirror into two equal part is known as pole we draw the perpendicular from m to d and there we are taking a good approximation that the aperture of the mirror is small when the aperture of the mirror is small light rays which are coming parallel okay here it passes through focus and one we have taken from the center of curvature center of curvature is the center of a sphere whose mirror is a part so this is the incident ray this is the incident ray and this is this one is the reflected ray and the line which is passing through this c okay this one c that is normal this is the normal this one is the normal and this is the reflected ray so this is the angle of incidence this one is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection they should both should be same so it is theta then it will be also theta so this one will be equal to 2 theta okay and this is also considered to be theta okay if the aperture is small then this point will be very closer then this fm that should be equal to fd okay this fm should be equal to fd so we can say that from this triangle mcd tan theta mcd tan theta will be equal to md upon dc md upon dc and from the mfd here it is tan 2 theta that is md upon fd md upon fd since we have taken the angle to be small as aperture is considered very small so tan theta will be equal to theta and tan 2 theta will be equal to 2 theta so we place the value of theta and 2 theta and dividing we get cd equal to 2 fd that means cd equal to twice of fd the distance between the focus and the pole okay that is known as focal length the distance between the center of curvature and the pole that is known as radius of curvature so by this we can say that radius of curvature is equal to twice of focal length or focal length is half of radius of curvature okay so under good approximation and condition we can derive this relation that focal length is half of radius of curvature now we will set up mirror formula mirror formula gives a relation in between focal length of a mirror object distance from the pole and image distance from the pole so i'll use chalkboard and duster in order to explain you
students, we are going to derive mirror formula. Mirror formula you have studied in 10th standard, but in 12th standard you need to do the derivation also. Okay, so some assumptions by deriving mirror formula that we are taking. First assumption is the rays should be fancy. Okay, they should not be marginal rays. Second is the aperture of the mirror for which you are applying mirror formula that should be taken small. Third is the object should be small in size. Object should not be large in size, it should be small in size. So these are the assumptions okay, while deriving mirror formula that we are taking. Okay, so to set up the mirror formula, set up the mirror formula which is 1 upon f equal to 1 upon d plus 1 upon this has to be derived. Okay, we construct a red we consider object A okay, cap in front of a container at a distance C. Okay. Uh, such that this image is formed A dash B dash. In this case, we are considering serial inverted and small in size image is formed okay, at a distance B. Let R be the uh, radius of curvature of the mirror. Then we will derive this formula by using the property of the similar triangles. Okay. So we will see that. Uh, similar triangles, how we can take? Okay, so in this figure, can you see some similar triangles? You find A, B, C, and A dash, B dash, C. These are the similar triangles. So we take these similar triangles, A, B, C, that is similar to A dash, B dash, C. Okay, when the triangles are similar, we can take the ratio of the corresponding sides. That should be equal. So from this triangle, A, B upon a dash B dash that should be equal to BC upon B dash C BC upon B dash C Let it be equation number 1 Okay Another similar triangle that we need to take Okay So we draw A to B like this Incident ray Okay this is the incident ray and then we will pass through This Okay so this triangle A B C is also similar to A dash B dash B. Okay. Triangle A B C similar to triangle A dash B dash B. Okay, because these angles are equal. Okay. And uh, this angle is A B B A dash B dash B that is 90 degree each. So these triangles are similar. So again we may apply the same property. A B upon A dash B dash that should be equal to BC upon B dash B. Question number 2. Okay. Now LHS of both the equations, left hand side of both the equations are equal. So we may equate the RHS. So comparing 1 and 2, what we can get? What we can get? BC upon B dash C. We may write down that. Okay. BC upon B dash C. That should be equal to BC upon B dash C. Okay, now we are around x coordinate, so we may apply the value along with the sign conventions. And the sign convention that has to be applied here. Okay, so we will write the value BC. How we can write BC? So BC can be written as BP minus BC. BC that is BP minus BC. Okay, B dash C. This is B dash C. How we can be written? BC minus B dash B. And that is equal to BP upon B dash B. Okay, now we have to apply the sign conventions. So here I am writing the values. Okay, BB. First is BB. Second is BC. BC. Okay, and third is B dash B. Okay, BT. This is B to B. So this is the object distance. So it should be minus U. Take the sign convention. Second is BC. This is the radius of curvature. Left hand side should be minus R. Third is B dash B. It is the image distance LHS minus B. Now we will put the value here. So it will be minus U minus BC. That will be minus minus R BC minus R B dash B minus minus B BP BP dash minus U minus B. We got this okay this minus and minus cancel i am writing here okay so it will be minus
we arrange this that what we are going to get we can write like this okay r b plus r u equal to u b and plus u b that will be equal to u b and then r that is b plus u that will be equal to u b okay okay then r radius of curvature that is a choice of focal length so we may write down like this two l Of the image to the height of the object, or the mirror is equal to minus v upon 